boy with a bunch of these buzzards on your tail, soldier? Well, a lot of other GIs have. You've got to be able to fight back fast, or your convoy's a cold turkey. Hearing them in time is some help, but you can't always count on that. Let's say you do hear them in time to scatter. How are you going to hit back? Seemed pretty helpless, didn't they? There had to be a more mobile defense, and we've got it. First, we stuck a 50 in the back of a truck. Where the truck went, the gun went, and it could fire on the move. But there were lots of spots it couldn't go. Back in 41, we tried out this job. Twin 50s on a half track. The idea? More mobility, greater firepower, and an electric turret that spun the two guns faster than any GI could handle. The thing looked good, and from it grew this M13 half-track, a bus that takes rough, fast going and shoots on the run. About the same time came the M15. For greater accuracy, it has to stop to fire, but it makes up for that in the amount of steel it can toss out. It has twin 50s too, but more than that, it packs a 37 millimeter anti-aircraft gun, throwing better than a shell a second into the sky. And here's an even later model, the M16. It's fast, maneuverable, and rugged. Those four heavy barrel 50s carry a lot of death for a baby this size. Watch. back to the M13 to get an idea of how these power turrets work. That's the man who runs it, hiding behind that shield. Let's take it off and see what he looks like. The handles he has in his hands do the whole job of controlling. Twist the handles back and the guns elevate. Twist forward and the guns come down. Turn them sideways and the turret traverses that way. If the handles are moved quickly, the guns move quickly. Slow and they move slowly. The guns are fired electrically by solenoids when you squeeze either of the trigger switches underneath your fingers. One switch or both, it doesn't matter. Both guns will fire. Power comes from these storage batteries, charged by that little gas engine. The sight is one we borrowed from the Navy, a Mark IX reflector sight. Gives you a quick view of your target with no fooling around. The two power turrets are most effective up to 700 yards. Suppose we go back to the M15, which can reach out more than twice that far. On this job, the guns are traversed and elevated by hand. The leads, vertical and lateral, are set in with this handle. The lead setter pulls it toward him, he sets in a positive vertical lead. Turning it in either direction sets in lateral leads. All the gun pointers do is keep the plane lined up in their scopes. The two cannoneers supply the ammunition and clear stoppages. But don't kid yourself, it's not a pretty nasty weapon. How would you like to have this pointing your way and firing? For 78 Nazi pilots in Tunisia, this was the last thing they saw on Earth, if they had time to look. Okay, let's hit the road. We've been sounding off about the tactical mobility of these half-tracks. 
Now let's thumb a ride with this outfit to see for ourselves. In combat, every other vehicle carries a radio tuned to the warning net. When action starts, they've got to get their orders straight and get them fast. There'll be no time to stall around. Here on a good highway, they can really get rolling. They'll do 45, which is fast enough for any convoy. They have to slow up a bit for sand and rough terrain like this, but it's still good going and they can keep it up for a long time. When they hit soggy ground, they go plowing right on through. Don't forget that wherever they go, they travel ready for instant action. And if the mud turns out to be too soft for the rubber tracks to take, they have chains that can be slapped on in no time. But just get a load of what these babies are slogging through without them. No, there aren't many outfits that can leave these half tracks behind. They're up ahead of the tanks with the engineers. They keep the sky clear for the armored force covering troops on bivouac, defending a newly captured landing strip. Anywhere you can expect enemy attack planes, that's the spot for these half tracks. A bridge along your supply route. That's a natural for strafing planes and low level bombers. They'd be suckers if they didn't try to hit you there. If you've got enough guns to spare, put some in close to the ends of the bridge itself. But the best spots are out along both approaches to the bridge. Planes will come in along there to get the biggest run they can. Pull far enough off the road to take advantage of all the natural concealment there is. If you have time to pick your spot, choose one where you can see all of the sky around you. One that'll give you a good big field of fire. Crossroads are favorite targets too, because of the concentration of traffic you'll usually find there. When your column approaches one, the half tracks go on ahead and pull up to stand guard. Once again, Get a good field of fire and concealment if you can. The outfit we're with is having target practice today on the anti-mech range. Although this is a secondary mission of self-propelled AW, don't get the idea that the only way these guns can shoot is up. Against anything up to and including light tanks, they can do a lot of damage. Don't forget this is only target practice. Never set up your half tracks this close together in combat. And here you can get an idea of the firepower they can bring to bear on an enemy target. Watch the target now. Too bad that was made off staff car. And now let's run through the list as they track and fire at the targets they were built to destroy. First, the M13, 250s. And here's what the gunner sees. Second, the M15, twin 50s and a 37 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. Last, the M16. 450s throwing 1,800 rounds a minute. If you're the driver, you never have to worry about some eight ball shooting into your cab. He just can't do it. There's a switch that cuts out the guns at that point. See? Well, that's the works. They're small, they're fast, they're plenty rugged. They haven't wings and they can't outclimb a Messerschmitt. But they'll do a mighty good imitation of it on the ground. You've really got something here.